Welcome back to A Closer Look. Minister for Higher Education and Sports and member for Kandep Open, Don Polier, took on the lead in advocating for peace in the warring tribes within Kandep and Wapenamanda districts in Anga province, following tribal fights that escalated at an unprecedented level where international communities had turned it into a topic of their discussions on various news platforms. In a press conference this week, Minister Polier revealed that leaders of respective tribes have laid down weapons and called for ceasefire and the process of peace is currently underway. Reporter Sharon Ngnui with this story. Taking the lead in advocating for peace in Enga province is a member for Kandep Open, Don Polie, who applauded the leaders of the warring tribes for the ceasefire that already happened. The Wabenmanda people and the Kandep people, those of you who have been affected, you've made your decisions to create a ceasefire. I commend their all the tribal warriors, all the tribal leaders, uh, all the young fighters, uh, every one of you who participated in the tribal warfare. You have called a ceasefire three weeks ago, and I'm very thankful to you. You've done very well. Prime Minister is very thankful. Everybody else is very happy that you have laid down guns and arm armament and you have now started the peace process. Ceasefire we have already achieved in three uh, weeks of no fire. I must commend uh, every tribe uh, people uh, in, uh, in Wabinamanda uh, for the achievement, and also in Kandev too. I'm thankful for all of you for achieving that. In Kompiam too, uh, there's not been any report or any incident of trouble fights in, in that uh, part of the province as well. And we are very thankful. This will now be followed by issuing of the preventive orders through the provincial system, which all tribal leaders will sign commencing next week, in which the minister will join. We have done the ceasefire. The next thing we're doing is we are uh, issuing through the provincial system, uh, the provincial uh, law and order director, Mr. Nelson, uh, and the chairman, Ackerman, under the governorship of uh, Honorable uh, Grand Chief Sir uh, Peter Ipatas and the administrator, uh, Sunday Saka, uh, the administrative positioning is now in place to issue the preventive orders, and that's happening. Next week, I'll be traveling up there to Enga uh, to participate with them, uh, to support them, and to encourage the people, the tribes, and the warriors, uh, the opposing tribes, to come together to. Uh, receive those preventing orders and to sign on it. And that is happening next, uh, I see. Minister Polier has called on the development partners for support, highlighting that the tribal warfare escalated to an unprecedented level. The Australian government has been very, very uh, loyal and faithful to supporting us. I'd like to thank the Un United Nations and UNESCO, the others who have been so faithful in helping us, the Red Cross, I'd like to comment the Red Cross, I'm so faithful helping Papua New Guinea in times of uh, challenging, uh, times of despair like this. And other NGOs that may have participated, uh, I'd like to also thank them for their participation with, with us. I'd like to thank the New Zealand government, uh, Japanese government, uh, and others will come in to assist in some ways. I'd like to recognize that and thank you. And we will continue to mobilize your support to channel in these two areas, one, humanitarian help, and a second, infrastructure. Um, in a normal travel, tra travel fight, I wouldn't be asking for this. I wouldn't uh, get our inner linen and put it in the table here. That would be embarrassing to do. But this has gone beyond a normal standard of travel warfare. It has gone far beyond. It's escalated to a level unprecedented. For instance, the kind of guns used is not the type of guns we saw used. And they are machine guns like the guns you find in uh, Afghanistan. No, you can't find they are out there fighting and probably the Ukraine and Russians are fighting each other. And those kind of things. We have seen even people are applying other technologies and I did mention uh, the drones as well. 
and, and then the level of killing is not uh, very minimal. In the traditional society, one or two or three deaths is too many already, but now countless. And it is just unacceptable, intolerable uh, to the human dignity. Um, and that is not what. So we have this really escalation of a the travel fight to a standard we have never seen. Therefore, the damage uh, has been huge. So we uh, must look at the humanitarian uh, support system uh, that must be created to help people. Um, and I'd like to ask all our uh, development partners and the Prime Minister well aware of this, the Minister of Internal Security Police is well out of this. Minister Polia also issued a stand warning to those involved in facilitating the tribal warfare in the two districts. Any person who disrupts this peace process already started will be dealt with very severely. That let me tell you, uh, people in Enga province, especially those that are involved in these fights, this country is a small country, and those of you who are involved in it, you are already known. Your names are in the recorded books of government. I've spoken to the police commissioner of Papua New Guinea, uh, Mr. Manning. I've spoken to the other law enforcement agents. I've spoken to them about these issues, and I have come to realization that all of you are involved in one way or another in the tribal warfares in Obanamanda, in Kompiam, in Kandev, in other parts of Henga, you have been listed. All of you have been listed. Your names are in government records. You are not hidden. Whether you be a public servant, whether you be a private businessman, whether you be a, a lawyer, an accountant, whether you are working overseas, or whether you're working within Papua New Guinea, all of you have been listed. Polia made this statement due to allegations which have been circulated that the tribal warfare happening in the districts were facilitated by influential individuals. Polia says supporting tribal fights is a criminal act highlighting that their actions have a greater impact on the nation. The tribes are known, the clans are known, and every one of you is known. If you start this fight again, even after the ceasefire, I'll tell you what will happen. We will not go arresting those young people that have been used uh, and who have been given the gun, who have been supplied the money. I will be very strong on this. I mean, me, Don Pompoli, I'll be very strong on this. I will take it personally, take it personally, and I will work with the police and law enforcement agents to get all of you in. Minister Poli urged those involved in facilitating this tribal warfare to engage meaningfully to bring peace into the area. Those you people living, Angans living overseas and Angans living in Papua New Guinea, I urge all of you, to contribute meaningfully, to bring peace, support us in, partner with us in the custom ways that we have already established. So tell your warriors and tell them, go and get the, sign the form for or the preventive order and the restraining order. Tell your uh, tribesmen to not to touch the gun again. Tell them that now we must make peace. Tell them that we now do the custom and tell the older people and other people who know about the custom, the provincial government system, the national government, development partners in, in, within the periphery of work that I am doing. You call on us and work with us in partnerships and we come in and we start doing the custom and then we start to look at the humanitarian aid and also do the rehabilitation of those destroyed properties and infrastructure and business. According to Polia, this peace restoration process will ensure there is peace in Enga province in the long run. Don't go away. When we return, we highlight the Central Province Peace and Reconciliation Program spearheaded by Governor Rufina Pita.